I was born and raised in the great state of Missouri, and our motto there is show me. And that was probably the first sentence I ever learned. And all my life I've been saying to my inventors and my scientists, show me. Well, they have. They've gotten to the point where we can actually do this. That's what this wonderful meeting seminar in Congress is about, the Breakthrough Energy Congress 2012. And it is my great pleasure this morning to present to you Sterling Allen, who, in my opinion, is the conduit to bring all of these technologies together in communications, in synergy, and he's here to tell you about that today. So with that, Sterling. Thank you. I want to uh, say thanks for coming to this presentation. Uh, and to be part of the movement, I salute all of you for the different roles that you're playing. And both those who are present here, as well as those who will be listening through the international broadcasts online, as well as those who will be listening afterwards uh, to the recordings. Uh, this is a, an amazing adventure that we're on together. And the purpose of what I do and, and the network that we're involved with is to bird dog the very best technologies. Uh, there's so many out there. I, I know a lot of you, like myself, have been involved in this field, trying to find the working technologies and vetting, looking. You, I, I was making a joke uh, yesterday that the free energy quest is somewhat like the TSA quest, trying to find the, the uh, terrorists in the midst of all these great uh, customers who are coming through the terminal to get on the planes and they have a hard time finding the terrorists, mostly because they don't realize that the terrorists are the ones that are running the government, not the ones that are coming through. <laughs> so anyway, uh, that, that's a terrible analogy because I'd like to think that our quest is much more noble than the TSA or the, the uh, airport security quest. Uh, but sometimes you get that feeling that it's just one after another of, of, of this searching and, and looking through all the, the evidence to, to come up with nothing. And then you find something that looks suspicious, and you, you look into it, and it turns out it's just benign. And meanwhile, they're har harassing all these great uh, you know, travelers through the airport who, who uh, any, that terrible analogy, I apologize for that. But um, it, it does, I think, capsulize a little bit of the feeling that we get when we're trying to find that, that uh, needle in the haystack. And so, with that uh, introduction, uh, we're looking for a world where every car has its own power within it, so you don't have to stop for fuel. Every house in the garage has a unit that's powering the house. Every appliance has its own built-in energy source. Uh, your portable devices don't have to be plugged in anymore because the battery is actually harvesting energy from the environment freely, uh, inexhaustibly. That is the world of the future, and that is the world that we're tracking together. Uh, and I believe that we are in process of finding it, and that we are very close to achieving this, and that how soon we get there is not the technology's uh, question. It, it's, it's a social question of when are we going to be ready for it as a civilization that there's a concurrent raising of the technologies and the developing of the technologies, they've been ready for a good hundred years, wouldn't you agree? What hasn't been ready has been us as a people uh, and the powers that be that are getting us and, and keeping our addiction to oil and to their power structure. We need to rise up as a civilization and be ready to accept these technologies then they will come and they're lined up, ready to go. They're basically in the wings saying, okay, when, when can we come on stage? That's, that's the feeling I get as I track this. Do you have the, somebody who knows the technologies? I mean, okay, the let's, feeling or are they really there? And if they are there, uh, who's going to distribute them? He's, he's saying, do we have somebody who actually has the technologies? That's what we're going to be talking about here today. Yeah. Our... our um, We'll get there. We'll talk about what is free energy, and we'll talk about the top five as, as far as I see it, and some runners up, and we'll talk about a f action item at the end. Uh, in talking about free energy, the thing that you're 
conditioned as like a Pavlov's dog, as these, these things are impossible. But we also know that they said human flight was impossible, and they were very wrong about that. Uh, that the ability to, you know, heavier than air flight of humans, that would never happen. Uh, it's not perpetual motion. I don't believe in perpetual motion. Free energy is not something for nothing. It's just taking an invisible source, for example, something and converting it into something else that is usable. And so I get very frustrated because I'm a scientist and, and the scientists come along and say it's impossible, yet where's the scientific inquiry that the first question should be when you see something that's working is how does it work, not wait, that violates the laws of physics. That's not the way a true scientist thinks. A, a scientist says, okay, here's a, a phenomena. Let's look at it. Let's quantize it. It's, let's uh, perfect it. And, let's, and then, then the entrepreneur can come along and bring it to market. Uh, we have this saying on the bottom of our website, all truth passes through three phases. First, it's ridiculed then violently opposed, and third is accepted as self-evident. And I believe that we are moving past the second into the third phase, that we are close to that quantum leap as society, even though the powers that be seem to have almost a complete monopoly over civilization right now, there is an awakening, there is an enlightenment that's going on. People are waking up to their chicanery, to their, uh, their tricks, to their fraud, and there's going to be this massive, you know, biblical prophecy talks about a nation shall be born in a day. That's a very rapid quantum leap transformation. And so we are looking at a radical transformation. It's not going to be a gradual thing. And I can tell you, as you look at some of these technologies we're talking about today and others that I don't know about, I want you to focus today on not, not specifically what we're looking at in the, the minutia, but the general principles. I'm a generalist. I'm not a, a specific, uh, you know, hone in and look specifically at one thing and, and focus on that. Uh, I, I go for the general principles. So forgive me if I give wrong numbers, if I'm too high, too low, give the wrong names. It's the idea that I'm trying to convey, okay? Um, when you're one step ahead of the crowd, you're a genius. When you're two steps ahead of the crowd, you're a crackpot. And I, I said this in a presentation over in Estonia about geothermal energy. And somebody from the audience says, when you're one step behind, you're the government. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I can tell you right now, if you're trying to get the government to get involved in this kind of uh, endeavor, you're, you are in an impossible, that's the impossible task. <laughs> um, they, they will, they'll come along eventually, but this stuff has to come from the private sector, from entrepreneurs, from the grassroots up, uh, and then it'll be adopted later by the governments. Right, Joel? <laughs> okay, I'm going to go on a tangent here. This is the uh, first time I've talked about this. I'm reading a bo um, book, that, and uh, this is a new uh, directed energy weapon. Notice on the left, you have a, a pillar of iron going up steel, going up into the air. And then notice as, it go, as you go to the right, that rather than just collapsing, this thing is turning to dust. Okay? This is new technology. This is based on a lot of energy, probably a free energy technology. And where was this illustrated? On September 11th, 2001, in New York City. That building was not collapsed. It was not a controlled demolition. They turned that thing to dust. As you look on the right-hand side, look at that piece that's coming down right there. See the dust coming off of it as it's falling. It's not a free piece of, of chunk that's going to hit the ground. The seismic signature on this thing, 2.3 on the Richter scale, was the same as the, a super dome that was demolitioned brought down that was 170th, 1 over 70, the size had the same uh, seismic signature, 2.3 on the Richter scale. It should have been a 110-story building that is 500,000 tons of steel and concrete and other office supplies should have at least 
down a 3.8 on the Richter scale, and the signature only lasted for six seconds. It would take nine seconds for the things in the top to hit the bottom. Um, right there in the middle, you see an ambulance that was parked in front of the World Trade Center that is higher than the wreckage around it. A 110-story building just fell, supposedly, and our ambulance is still intact, hasn't been crushed, and right next door, about uh, 200 feet from this, 12 firemen survived in a, in a part of, of a, uh, a stairwell that wasn't, that wasn't collapsed by the dust. It was a directed energy weapon. As you look at this thing, it's, it's like it wasn't a clean cut across the bottom. Uh, they basically uh, it was, it ended here. Over here, it was a little higher. Over here, it was a little lower. Uh, this was new technology that they deployed on that day. And uh, as you see this thing, see, for example, on the right-hand side, that's Building 7. That was classical demolition. You see the puffs coming out on the right-hand side. You can see where they, they did the demolition charges. That's a typical dem demolition right there. And that building was probably a staging area for the, uh, for the directed energy weapons that brought down Building 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5. There were not just three buildings brought down that day. Building one and building two are the ones we saw, we, everyone saw. They were right next to buildings three and four, which is the Marriott uh, Hotel um, and, and another one that went all the way to the ground as well. On the left-hand side there, you see um, building seven that is six stories high of wreckage because it was classical. Everything, all the material's still there. It's stacked up as high as this six-story building right here that was partially demolished as well. The directed energy weapon went in here, not here. This is building one, almost ground level. This is building seven. This was 110 stories. This one was, uh, what was it, 47 stories. This pile should have been at least 28 stories high. When you see evidence like this and you put two and two together, you realize that what we've been told is not the truth. Free energy is real. They don't want you to know that because they've been using it for their own, you know, secret projects, flying UFOs around and stuff like that. They've got way advanced stuff, way beyond it. When we look at this stuff, we, we don't even know where to put it in our mind because we've never encountered it before. You know, here we are 10 years plus after September 11th, and we're looking at this evidence almost for the first time, realizing what we've been told is so, so not true. And the government that's, and the, the dark forces behind the government, they're pulling this off. This was not Arab weaponry. This was black ops, top of the line stuff that they were pulling on us that day. They've also got free energy technologies that they are sequestering for their own purposes, not for us. And what we want to do is we want to have a groundswell of these technologies coming from the private sector to basically, see, here's, here's something we've got going for us that they don't, that, that they, I don't think, see coming. They've been conditioning everyone like Pavlov's dogs to think that free energy is bogus, junk science, and they have actually believed the lie themselves. So the powers that be, to a certain extent, I think, are underestimating us. And that's one of the reasons why we are getting so close is because they believe the lie that they've told everyone else that it's impossible, that it's never going to go anywhere, that you can basically look the other way, you know, go on about your, your business. There's nothing here to, of, of significance. When in reality, what we have here is going to transform the world. It's going to make them obsolete. It's going to empower the individual. It's going to bring power to the people. That's what we have coming.